Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we've got another children's toy. Well, I have been having an absolute blast designing these toys and you guys are showing your appreciation by being very enthusiastic about it and sending me all the pictures of all the toys that you're making from my designs. And it's absolutely awesome. And today we're going to continue with that construction series and we're going to make a bulldozer. Now there's a lot to cover on this project, so let's head right over to the bench and I'll show you where we start. Well, once again, there are enough pieces here that it is going to warrant having to have two sheets. And we're going to start off with what I think could be the most challenging part of the build. It's not difficult, it's just time consuming, and that will be our main tracks. So for that, we have two pieces of half inch thick walnut and two pieces of quarter inch thick walnut. All of them measure four and 13 sixteenths long and two and a quarter inches wide. Now we can put our quarter inch pieces aside for now and we're going to concentrate on our half inch thick pieces. So what we need to do at this point is we need to adhere our pattern here for our main tracks onto our half inch thick walnut. So when cutting out the pattern, I have cut it so that we have the cut line right along the bottom of our track on both of them. And I have cut it close to the ends of the track and then lined it up with the bottom edge here and centered left to right on our half inch thick blanks. So at this point now, I want to take this over to the scroll saw and we're gonna cut out this center section. So I've sanded the back of each one of these to get rid of any burring around the inside here. And what we need to do now is take our quarter inch thick pieces and glue them to the back of each one of our tracks here. So we're going to glue these in place. Make sure that you clean up all your squeeze out on the inside. Make sure all your edges are lined up nice and straight. And once you get that done, just sit them aside and let them dry. While we're waiting for the backing on those tracks to dry, we can cut the other parts for that we need for these tracks. And what we can cut are the four guide wheels. We need two of each one of these, one for each, one set for each side of our tracks. It's basically two one and one eighth diameter circles, one three quarter inch diameter circle, and one half inch diameter circle. I'm just gonna cut these at the scroll saw, cut them out a quarter inch thick material, and we'll use a lighter material, like a maple or that sort of thing, maybe some poplar, whatever I have in the rack that is lighter than the walnut of the tracks. As well, we can also cut this piece right here. Now you can choose whatever you want to cut this out of. It's from 1 8 thick material, but you're going to need two of these. And these are the cover plates for our wheels on our track. So I don't think we need a video of me cutting these out. I'm gonna get those parts done and I'll come back and I'll show you how we glue them in place. All right, so on each one of our blanks here, our 1 and 1 8 inch wheels each one of them will get glued right down here in the corner just like that so we'll glue both of those in our three quarter inch wheel that one is going to get glued right up here in this little nook in this top section right there and our little half inch wheel is kind of like a tensioner wheel that one will just sit right here at the top of this track halfway between our one and one eighth and our three quarter inch wheel just like that all right so glue those into both your blanks clean up any squeeze out if you've got them and let them completely dry 
Well, the next step in making these tracks, now that the glue is dry, is that we need to cut around the perimeter and cut all of these little grooves. Um, this would be a filming and viewing nightmare as this will be very time consuming. So I'm going to get these cut. Remember that this is three quarter inch thick stock now. So choose your blade accordingly. Uh, for me, I'm going to use a number seven PGT reverse tooth blade to cut this. And um, I guess I'll see you when I get both of them cut and we can move on. And when you're done, you have something that looks like this. Look at how awesome those look. Now, there's one more step to do here. We need to drill a couple of holes, and that's where your other patterns come into play. So what you want to do is cut these out in the perimeter, flip your tracks over so that you're looking at the back side of the tracks, and line up your templates. And I'm gonna tell you, these are nothing more than a template for where to drill our quarter inch diameter holes. So line these up carefully and right through your pattern now, right here, you can just mark your quarter inch diameter hole. And then once we get these marked, we will take these over to the drill press and we will drill those through holes. Now they will go right through your maple wheels on the other side. And don't worry about that, they're supposed to. So that gets covered up with your guard later on. I'll show you a little later. So let's get these quarter inch holes drilled and that would be the last step for our tracks. And that is all the pieces for our tracks, including our covers. They will get glued in a little later. Um, for now, we can put these aside and we can concentrate on the next pieces that I'd like to cut. And that will be the main body of our bulldozer and our cab walls. These are a quarter inch thick. I'm cutting two of them and I'm going to stack cut them so that they're both identical. Um, this one here, we need one. It's three quarters of an inch thick. These cuts here for the vents of the engine, they are completely optional. If you are not um, confident to cut these, then do not cut them. Leave them as they are. And uh, that's all there is to it. Make the model your own. So I'm gonna get both of these cut and get our quarter inch diameter through hole drilled in our cab sides. And then I'll come back and I'll see ya. And with these three pieces cut, we can glue them together um, just line up the bottom and the back edges as best as you can and you will end up with something that looks like this. Now we can trim this up later to get these a little more even. My cutting was a little off there and that's okay, that happens. So we can glue these together and that will form most of the body for our bulldozer. But now we want to turn our attention to the rear fenders. And we can see here that they are cut from a half inch piece of material, uh, or half inch thick piece of material rather, and we will need to cut two of those. So get those cut, get this gluing up, and then I'll show you what to do next. And with those two fenders cut, what we can do is glue one of these onto our bulldozer. And it lines up, the front edge lines up with the cab here, and the back edge, this profile right here, lines up with the back of our bulldozer. But you will notice here that it covers up our quarter inch hole, and that's just fine, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue one of these on, we're gonna flip it over and drill through to get our hole through this, this fender piece. And then once we get the second one glued on, we'll then drill right through again to get our quarter inch hole all the way through our pieces. So now with those cut and you'll glue those up, you can take your time now and shape the back. If you have any misshapings, once all of that is glued together, um, you can 
tune those up, get the back all leveled out and all even. And that should be it for our cab section with the uh, only exception being our roof. And the roof is nothing but a flat piece of 1 8 inch thick material. You can just follow the pattern, cut it and glue it centered in place on the top of our cab. Well, while we're waiting for those other pieces to dry, we can cut the shovel arms. And these will both be cut out of quarter inch thick material. I'm gonna stack cut them again to make sure that they're identical. I will drill these quarter inch holes first, and then we'll just take it over to the scroll saw and cut around the perimeter. Well, for the wheels of our bulldozer, we need some one and a half inch diameter dowel. Now, I didn't have any, so I had to turn these. But if you have them, then you need two pieces that are one and a quarter inches long. You will also need two pieces of quarter inch diameter dowel and they will be two and a quarter inches long each and they will be the axles. But now it's time for a little bit of assembly and let me show you how this goes. What we're going to do is in our tracks, we're going to glue into one of them we're going to glue our two quarter inch diameter dowels and we'll glue them so that they are flush with these two one and one eighth diameter wheels that we have in here. Once we get that done, we're going to slide our wheels onto those dowels. Now, the holes in these dowels, I have drilled these holes to be just a little larger than one quarter of an inch. In my case, I drilled them at 9 30 seconds of an inch in diameter. So what you need then will be your cab, which should look something like this. And what we want to do is sit it right in here. I'll just turn this sideways so you can see a little better. And you want to place just a little bit of a gap there, just a tiny gap a sixteenth to maybe an eighth of an inch gap between this fender and our track. And we will glue that in place and let it set up. And once that is set up, then we can flip it over and we can take our other track and we can glue that in place, making sure that our axles come through our holes for our wheels. And we can glue that in place just like that and at this point before you go too gung-ho you want to make sure that your wheels turn freely and if they do then you can clamp it up and let it dry so at this point you should have something that looks like this and you just want to make sure that your wheels turn i had mine a little too tight i had the track a little too high up and it actually stopped my wheels from turning because it was butting into our uh, main body so just make sure that they're free floating and that they can turn and once you're happy with that then now you can glue in your covers and they will just get glued in place just like this kind of centered on those wheels it'll cover up those holes that uh, have our axles in it and act as a nice decorative trim piece so we can get those glued in and then we just need to move on to the shovel we've already cut our arms for it and we're going to mount those next. So the very first thing that we're going to do in order to install our bucket arms is I have a length of quarter inch diameter dowel. It's three inches long and we are going to glue it centered into that hole that we drilled here through our cab and our fenders. So we can glue that in Make sure that it's perfectly centered and then we'll let that set up. You can now take your two arms and in the middle hole or the one furthest from the end, we will place our two arms onto our dowel that we just placed in there. And we have another length of quarter inch diameter dowel, three inches long. And we will place this into our back section here 
and glue it in place. Now you may want to lightly clamp your arms here to your side just to make sure that they're parallel. Um, we want a snug fit, but we don't want it too tight. You can even lower it down like this and clamp it in place if you wish. So we'll get that dowel glued in place and then let that set up as well. And while we're waiting for those to dry, I have cut the quarter inch diameter dowel for our exhaust pipe. I've drilled a stopped hole right there. You can see it in our main body section. And we're just gonna sink this dowel into that hole and glue it in place. Well, what I have is a piece of poplar in this case. It is one inch thick. It is three inches wide and two and 13 sixteenths tall. And I have placed the pattern for the profile of our scoop onto the front. Now, the first thing that I want to do here is I want to shape this section right here, this section right here, and this little curve, right, or this little flat section here. And that will all be done over at the belt sander. Well, shaping a piece this small is a very dangerous operation to hold it with your hands. So we're not gonna do that. You've seen me do this before, using double-sided tape to attach the smaller piece to a larger block. And I'm going to hold it by that larger block and shape the sections that I need. Once we get those square edges along the back, the bottom and the top done, we will turn our attention to this curve part in the front. So for the curve section, I have reattached our piece to our block here. And at the bandsaw, I've installed a quarter inch blade. And we are just going to roughly cut this around this perimeter here. And then we will finish it up over at the oscillating drum sander. <laughs> well, that's a first. Um, I noticed that the blade wasn't cutting quite right and I shut it off. If you ever have a problem with a tool, guys, shut it down and see what is going on before you continue. Uh, this blade, there's no way that poplar should be burning, um, not with this little cut. And it turns out that when I uncoiled my blade, I uncoiled it so that the blade is upside down. So it's not cutting right because my blade is improperly installed. I'm going to fix that right away. It just goes to show it doesn't matter how much experience you have. You can make mistakes like this. The important thing is to recognize the signs. I recognize the slow cut. I recognize the burning. I stopped and checked things out. Um, so there you go. Make sure your blade's in the right way before you start cutting. I'm gonna fix it up and get this piece cut and shaped. And there you go, there is the front end scoop. Now there is this flat section right here and that flat, flat section is what gets glued onto our arms, just like that. Now for mine, I'm going to be raising my scoop probably just a little less than one eighth of an inch. The reason for that, I don't want it catching on like carpet or that sort of thing while my granddaughter plays with it because it'll probably snap the scoop off. But if I raise it just a little bit, she'll still be able to push things around with it, but not worry about catching. So let's get this mounted. And uh, that's pretty much it for this toy this week, guys. And there you have it, a bulldozer toy, guys. I absolutely love the way this turned out. I really do. I have to tell you, it took me quite a while to design it. Um, the different layers make it difficult for me to picture it in my head sometimes. And I really had a hard time wrapping my head around this one. Um, I think the hardest thing for me to come up with was a way to do the tracks where 
they would look good and be functional. And while these tracks do not spin, they look great and the larger inch and a half diameter wheels underneath give it the stability and allow it to roll really well. So I was able to overcome that. I even thought of doing live, um, live tracks that would actually function, but I thought it's just way too intricate, way too small and way too fragile for a child's toy. So this is what I came up with and I'm very pleased with the results. Now, I have to say that that front scoop on the bulldozer, I did raise mine up that eighth of an inch. And I'm very happy with the way I did that. I think it's just great. However, the more I started to think about how easily that front scoop would be to hook and snap off, the more I had to do something about it. So what I did was I drilled some 3 32nd of an inch diameter holes right through that scoop and right into the arms in two different places on two different angles and I pinned it with some 3 32nd diameter dowels. Glued them right in there. They actually go into the arm about an inch. So honestly, I think that's gonna go a long way to helping keep that scoop where it belongs on the front of the, of the toy. The real only challenge here, or the thing that might be a little iffy for you guys, uh, would be cutting the actual perimeter of the tracks. And I'm going to give you some advice here. Do not try to do this around each one of the tracks. Do not try to go around the perimeter, down into the gap, around the gap, over the perimeter. Don't do it. You will drive yourself absolutely nuts in a piece that is three quarter inch thick and walnut at that, it'll be a nightmare. It will really be a nightmare. So my advice to you on how to cut these is to cut the entire perimeter first. Once you get the perimeter cut, cut the vertical lines that come down into the track. And then once you get them, Cut one swooping curve to the one corner and then clean it up by spinning around and cleaning out the other side. You will get much better results. It's a little more time consuming, but you won't have as many problems as what you would have if you tried to do this kind of thing with it. One other thing I will point out here, guys, is that on the pattern, there are quite a few sharp angles and sharp edges. Um, that is just a matter of drawing it on the computer and it's the way the pattern came out for me. I could have rounded them, but then you get into issues trying to actually cut that curve. So I will point out there are young children playing with these toys. Please, please, please make sure you sand off all sharp corners, all sharp points, all sharp edges and give that toy a soft feel in those young tender hands. Uh, getting cut by a toy suddenly makes it no fun. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I am really loving these toys, and you guys are too. And just like all the other ones that I have put out there, this pattern is free for the taking. Um, I designed it with the intention to share it with all of you. And if you want one of those, you can send me a message at the channel's Facebook page. Uh, you can drop me an email at a cut above underscore woodworking at hotmail.com and I would be more than happy to send it to you so that you can make a toy like this for your loved ones because it really is spectacular. Heck, why not turn around and make a bunch for your local toy drive for this next coming Christmas? Uh, Christmas has just passed, it's a little too late, but you've got all year to make a bunch of these to give away to children who aren't as fortunate as some of us are. Guys, if there's a toy that you want to see designed and brought here to the show, drop me a comment down below and I'll add it to the list of toys that I'm hoping to come up with in the year 2022. So don't be shy, drop your suggestions down below. Guys, I hope that you've really enjoyed today's content. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Click that bell and then you won't miss the future notifications of the show. I hope that you've enjoyed today's toy, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed the product that I've brought you here. I hope that you're going to try this yourself. And more importantly, I honestly hope that you are going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.